In the beginning, God made the heaven and earth. It's so dark. God said, let there be light. And light came to be. God called the light day and called the darkness night. Day one. It's so damp. God made a space called heaven to divide the waters. There was water above and water below. Day two. God joined the waters below and made land appear. He called the land earth and the waters seas. Then the land made fruit, grass, herbs, and trees. Day three. God put lights in the sky to light the earth so we can see and count the days. He made a small light to rule the night and the stars. Then he made a big light to rule the day. Day four. God made animals too. He put sea life in the water to swim all around. Day five. Then God created land animals, tall animals, short animals, big animals, and small animals. He saved the best creation for last. Can you guess who? People. God made man and woman to be like him. Have babies, he told them. Eat from the trees and take care of the world. And it was very good. Day six. On the seventh day, God looked at his creations and smiled because it was very good. He made the day special as a day of rest for you and me. Sabbath, yes, day seven. Man and woman, learn about man and woman and name the animals. After making the earth, God made a beautiful garden. He put two special trees in the middle of the garden. God put the man in the garden to take care of it. He told the man, eat, but do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, or you will die. Then God thought, the man is lonely. I will make a helper for him. So he made animals and birds and told the man to name them. Can you name the animals too? Let's see. We have a kangaroo, a rabbit, we have a raccoon, mm -hmm. sheep, a horse, an owl, and we have a fox. Oh, look, and here comes a little bunny. Wow, so adorable. The man named all of the animals, but he was still lonely. Oh, there, there's a giraffe, a tiger, a lion, a hippo. So after God realized that the man was lonely, God put the man to sleep and formed from the man's rib, he made woman. The man was happy. He smiled and said, Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. I'll call you a woman because you came from man. So 
the two were married and became one. And they were both naked in the garden and happy. Oh, look, there's a seagull and chickens. <laughs> and they were happy in the garden. The end. Thank you for listening, children. The first sin. After creating the earth, God made a beautiful garden for the man and woman to live. God said, Take care of the garden. Eat of the tr fruits and trees, except from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Satan heard what God said, but he came as a serpent to trick the woman. Are you sure God said not to eat of this tree? asked the serpent. God said, We will die if we eat from the tree of knowledge, said the woman. The serpent said, You won't die. God doesn't want you to eat from the tree because you'll know what he knows. So, the woman ate from the tree and gave some to Adam to eat too. Then they knew th new things, even that they were naked, so they put leaves together for clothes. They had a feeling that something was wrong. Adam! Adam, where are you? God called. We're hiding. We know we're naked, said Adam. Because you didn't listen and ate from the tree. God was sad. The woman gave me the fruit, Adam said. The serpent tricked me, the woman said. And God said, Serpent, you will crawl on your belly and eat dust. Woman, you will have babies in pain and your husband will rule over you. Adam, you will work hard to grow food. Then God put them out of the garden. Adam called the woman Eve because she was the mother of all living. Then angels guarded the garden with swords of fire to protect it. Cain and Abel After the garden, Adam and Eve had two sons whose names were Cain and Abel. Abel kept sheep and Cain was a farmer. They were happy. Cain gave fruits and veggies to God, but God wanted a sheep. So Abel gave a sheep to God, and God was pleased, but Cain was jealous. See, Cain looked very jealous. Yes, indeed. God said to Abel, Why is Cain jealous when you have done good? You see, when you do good, you are rewarded. When you don't, there is sin. And Abel looks so worried. Indeed, he does. So Abel told Cain what God had said, and Cain was mad. When Abel wasn't looking, Cain hurt Abel. So Abel died because Cain was mad. See how mad he looks? And he hurt his brother, Abel. Let's see. When God looked for Abel, Cain said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Cain didn't tell the truth. Cain didn't tell God the truth. And so Cain was guilty. See, look at him looking all guilty right there. Mm -hmm. When God found out, Cain got in trouble and was punished. God cursed Cain's farm and made him homeless. Cain was scared. So God showed grace and made a sign to protect Cain. She, Cain is very scared. Mm-hmm, indeed. Then Cain got married and had children. Cain's children are 
Enoch, Erad, Mewel, Methusel, Lamech. And Adam and Eve had another son named Seth. So people started to call the name of Yah. Hey, Japath kids. Welcome to the Reading Corner. I'm Miss T, and I'm excited to read Genesis chapter 5 with you today. From Adam to Noah, we'll learn about the genealogy of Adam and follow the timeline. Let's read Genesis 5. When God created humans, God made them in his image. He created man and woman, and he blessed them and called the man Adam, and Adam called the woman Eve. Adam and Eve had a son named Seth, and then Seth became the dad of Enosh. Enosh had a son named Kenan, and Kenan became the dad of Mahalalel. Mahalalel became the dad of Jared. Then Jared had a son named Enoch. And Enoch had a son named Methuselah. He was really old. Methuselah became the dad of Lamech. Lamech became the dad of Noah. He sounds familiar. And Lamech said, Yahweh has made the ground produce little, but Noah shall bring rest to us after our labor. He will bring rest to us after the hard work of our hands. Then Noah became the dad of Shem, Ham, and Yepheth. And that's all of Genesis chapter 5. Travel through Genesis chapter 6 with us in the next reading corner. We'll see you there. Hey, Ancient Path Kids. It's Mrs. T, and welcome to the Bible Reading Corner. Today, we'll learn all about Genesis chapter 6, where Noah constructed the ark. Do you want to construct the ark with him? Great. We can do it together and learn about all the tools that he might have used. Remember, don't actually use tools unless you get your parents' permission. Let's get started. Genesis chapter 6. One day, Yahweh looked over all of the earth and he was sad because all of the people were doing bad things. One might have said he had a light bulb. Light bulbs help us to see and can also represent an idea. So, Yahweh was very sorry he made humans on the earth and he wanted to start over. Way might have think that he would use something like a blueprint to give to Noah. So, blueprints document our plans to build something new. It's really cool to read blueprints. Yahweh liked Noah because Noah was good. So he told Noah to build a special boat called an ark. If we were going to build this boat with Noah, we might use something like a handsaw. Handsaws can cut wood into different shapes. Yahweh said he would bring a flood of water to the earth but the ark would save Noah and his family. If we were gonna help Noah build this boat, we might use things like screws. Screws hold things together like wood or metal. So Yahuwah told Noah how to build the ark and he told him to make it very, very big. Well, to measure how big the ark was, Noah might use something like a tape measure. Tape measures help measure the length, height, and width of an object. Yahuwah also told Noah to fill the ark with every kind of animal, male and female pairs. And Yahuwah told him to bring food on the ark for Noah and the animals to eat. If we were helping him build this boat, we'd probably use hammers. 
Hammers are hand tools that drive harder things like screws into softer things like wood. Noah obeyed Yahuwah. He did everything that God told him to do. Well, if we were helping Noah carry the construction trash away, we might use something like a wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrows help us carry construction, trash, and other materials away from a construction site. Well, that's the end of Genesis chapter 6. It was fun building the ark with you. Remember, tools are for grown-ups, so only use them with your parents' permission. We'll see you next time in the Reading Corner. Hey, Ancient Path kids. Welcome to the Reading Corner. I'm excited to read Genesis chapter 7 with you today. We'll be learning about the Great Flood and counting the raindrops. <laughs> well, I don't know that we can count the raindrops, but there are some other things that we can count. Let's read. So, Genesis chapter 7, The Great Flood. God told Noah and his family to come into the ark. He told Noah to bring seven pairs of each kind of clean animal onto the ark so that they can stay alive. A pair is a set of two. How many pairs do you see here? Yes, three. There's a pair of giraffes, a pair of elephants, and a pair of hippos, three different kinds of animals. So Noah gathered male and female of each kind of animal. Noah was 600 years old. How many pairs do you see here? Seven, we have seven. We have pandas and fox and wolves and frogs and hedgehogs and mice and monkeys. So let's see, seven days later, God sent rain. It rained so hard that the earth flooded with water for 40 days and 40 nights. How many weeks do you think it rained for? Well, there's seven days in a week, and if it rained for 40 days, we do 40 divided by seven. That's about five to six weeks that it rained for. So it rained so hard that the ark got lifted off of the ground. It even covered the mountains. And after the flood, all life that had breath was gone, except Noah, his family, and all of the animals on the boat. The flood lasted 150 days. That's about five months. Hmm. Well, we'll have to see what happens in Genesis chapter 8. Thanks for reading with me. Hey, Gen Path Kids, I'm excited to read Genesis chapter 8 with you today and talk about the birds of the flood. Have you ever considered that birds can fly? So some of them definitely survive the flood. We'll learn a bit more about birds today in this chapter. Genesis 8, Birds of the Flood. God sent wind to take away the flood waters and it stopped raining. There's a hawk in this picture. Did you know that hawks can see eight times better than humans? They eat meat and they can live more than 20 years. That's a long time for a bird. After 40 days, Noah sent out a raven to tell him if the flood water had dried up from the earth. Did you know ravens are very smart? They're good hunters and they can mimic human voices. They even remember faces. Then Noah sent a dove to do the same, but both came back empty handed, the raven and the dove. So Noah waited another seven days and sent the dove out again. Did you know that doves have a good sense of direction? That's probably why he chose one. Dove feathers easily fall off and they mate for life. Doves drink water differently from other birds as well. I wonder how they were drinking the flood water. 
The dove came back to Noah with an olive branch. He sent the dove back out after that, but it didn't come back. So he knew the flood waters were gone. There's a toucan in this picture. Did you know that toucan's beaks are half of their length? and their beak regulates their blood flow. Toucans aren't that good at flying and they'd rather hop. <laughs> God told Noah and his family to get out of the ark and let all of the animals go free. They were in there for a long time. There's an owl in this picture. Did you know that owls have binocular vision? They are nocturnal and can rotate their necks 270 degrees. Wow. Noah offered an offering to God and God promised never to curse the ground again. I see a stork in this picture. Did you know that storks don't have a strong voice box? Some storks wingspans are over eight feet long and they come in many different colors, not just white. Thanks for reading Genesis chapter 8 with me. It was fun learning about the birds of the flood. See you next time in the reading corner. Colorful promises. After the flood, waters went away. God blessed Noah and told him to be fruitful and multiply. Fun fact. The colors we see in the rainbow are from light bending and splitting into many wavelengths in a water droplet. Red is the longest, so we see red first. God told Noah that every animal will fear him and that animals and plants can be food for him. Another fun fact is sunlight travels through space through waves, wavelengths. Raindrops bend light waves in different amounts. God then said, whoever sheds man's blood, by man his own blood is shed. And then God made a covenant promise with Noah, his family, and all the animals. Ooh, here's another fun fact. You can see a rainbow based on how you're standing. So when you move, the rainbow moves too. Wow. God promised to never destroy the entire earth with flood waters again. Ooh, more fun facts. Rainbows usually show from rain, but fog, mi fog mist, waterfalls, and dew can make rainbows too. Mm -hmm, indeed. God put a rainbow in the sky to help us and himself remember his promise. Ooh, more fun fact. A rainbow is a circle, not an arc, but we only see half a circle from the ground. I did not know that. Isn't that something? Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, repopulated the earth. Here's another fun fact. There are seven colors in the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So one day, Noah had too much to drink. He was naked. His son Ham saw Noah and told his brothers. So Noah cursed Ham's children to be servants to Ham's brothers and their children. Noah lived for 950 years and then he died.
Thank you so much for listening. Um, everyone, you have a blessed day from Grandpa Jack. Thank you.